I am having my best year since COVID. What's up guys, this is Tyler back in with another video and today we're going to be going through my eBay sales for the first quarter of 2024, comparing that to 2023 year end, and then breaking it down by car to see what's working and what's not working. Uh, but right now everything is working really, really well. So let's jump over into my eBay sales page and we are going to be first start off looking at 2023. Uh, we're going to jump down here and just break out the first quarter here. So you can see in the first quarter, I'm averaging roughly about 30,000, 26, 28,000, 26,000 in that first quarter. Things really picked up in April and May. And then you all probably noticed I kind of disappeared on YouTube for about six months. And that's just because I was enjoying life during the year, you know, doing things in, in nature that are really fun. And then I came back whenever, you know, prospects got really exciting. So we're going to talk about that. Um, whenever we compare the total 2023 sales, we're looking at 323,000 total sales, 255,000 net sales, almost 2,300 items sold, average price 143. The mix of auction versus fixed price is about 20 to 80, so leaning heavier towards fixed price. Compare that to our first quarter this year. And again, there's really not going to be a lot to take away from this. This is just kind of to set the stage. Almost 100,000 in sales for the first quarter, uh, slightly up. And this is, whenever this is a, com a quarter, if you're looking at these up and down arrows, this is comparing it to the previous quarter, last quarter being Q4 2023. So just FYI. Um, mix is still the same, 20 to 80% fixed price versus auction. The average sales price is slightly down. That is mainly attributed due to, uh, I listed some low end ungraded stuff, just you know, cheap dollar stuff. So a lot of that kind of drags it down. Again, nothing to really take away. Um, almost 800 items sold this quarter. That annualizes to about 3,200. The annualized total sales here is uh, projected to be 100, 000, or 400,000 if you annualize that number. Um, let's jump down here just quickly. Uh, a lot of repeat buyers love you guys out there. Thank you for the repeat business. That's fantastic. And then you can really see the first quarter breakout here. So first month of the year, horrible sales. I lost my top rated seller status and didn't really have a lot of good inventory. Then got a lot of inventory back from PSA, sold a lot in February and March. So just absolutely crazy, crazy profitability. You can actually break this down by the month. So if we look at what I've done this month alone, it's over 60% of the entire quarter. So March has been a gangbusters, like crazy, crazy month for me. And it's just all really, really good stuff. So what is it that I'm selling? What's working? What's not working? And what is my profitability looking like for 2024? And why is this my best COVID year? Well, let's jump on over into my Excel spreadsheet. This file contains every single card that I've bought in January, so since January 1st, 2024 and submitted to PSA. So you can see a lot of these cards have not been graded yet. No serial number given, no grade. But if we go down here, and this is all in the order that I submitted them. If we go down here, we start to get some serial numbers that have been assigned, some grades that have been assigned, uh, and then also some sales as well as you know expected sales. So as we look through this data, and we're not gonna go through every single card, I wanna summarize this very quickly. And we're gonna look at this, which is a breakdown of how much I've bought, how much I've spent in grading, what I've sold thus far, and then the expected inventory value, and then what is the overall profitability, ROI, my gym rates, uh, et cetera. So you can see there's 891 rows here. That means there are 890 items that I've submitted to PSA. Based on this number here, 389, I've received grades back on 389 of the 890 cards at PSA. So that means there's a lot of cards still at PSA, obviously. Um, of the 389 cards that I have a grade back on, I have sold roughly 20,000. So 19,569 cards. I still have a very substantial amount of inventory outstanding. My PSA 10 gym rate is roughly 57%. Uh, and then not really a lot of bad grades or some sixes or some sevens or some eights. Those are still, you know, roughly about 10% of the overall population, but by and large, roughly 90% of my cards come back gym mint or mint, but I also don't submit just exclusively new modern pack fresh stuff. I also submit a lot of older stuff, Michael Jordan memorabilia cards, all that type of stuff. So, um, I don't really care too much about the gym rate to be quite honest, uh, used to, but not much anymore. 
If we look at these sales, why is it that I think this is my best year? Well, if you annualize this operating margin, that 28,000 for the first quarter, if I keep this pace up and do this well for the following, the next three quarters, this margin is gonna project out to over 100,000. So over 100, 110,000 to 112,000 to be exact. And I still haven't logged every single purchase that I've made for the first quarter. I've got one more big order that I'm prepping to send out. It's gonna be over 100 cards. It's sitting over there. It's not present here in this Excel spreadsheet. And I've got more cards still incoming that are gonna be purchases. So um, maybe that's gonna be logged in Q2. But thus far, it's looking like a really good year. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this. So I have another tab of the $20,000 in cards that I've sold thus far, just so that you all don't think that I'm cooking the books on here in terms of what I expect a lot of these cards to get. Let's flip over and see of the cards that I've actually sold that roughly $19,500 in cards. These are the ones I've obviously graded and I've sold. What cards are doing well, what cards are not doing well, and what is that margin for the ones that I've actually already sold? Well, you can see that here. I've summed up the average margin for every single card and we're looking at of the 156 cards that I have sold thus far, that I bought in this year and sold, we're looking at a profit margin of $7,744.47. That's an average margin of $49.64 per card. You could argue that this is skewed higher in terms of a higher margin per card because cards that I list that I get back that are in high demand usually sell faster. The stuff that is not in high demand kind of sits on eBay and I have to blow it out via auction. So this number likely you know, is going to decrease of this 389, you know, cards that I've already graded. This is probably some of the best 157, you know, some of these cards I've obviously already blown out, like PSA 9 Strouds. I'm going to send a lot of those off to auctions. A lot of the PSA 9 stuff I'm just kind of selling, you know, so I have a lot more auctions going right now. But let's just look at some of the big cards that are doing really, really well for me and what I've done uh, well on. So the Red Seismic that I graded and showed off in one of my videos, I did end up moving that card and I almost have roughly a $2,000 profit on that. That's a big, big margin. Wyatt Langford has also done really well for me. I had a Green Wimby come back as well. Did, did pretty solid on that. I've got a lot more of those, a lot more Ices, a lot more Greens, a lot more Wimbies. Um, Shohei Otani sold uh, one of my pristine autographs. Very low margin. I haven't said that in the video. I said that it wasn't going to be something that I can make a lot on, but I did make roughly four, almost 400 bucks. It's so funny. I almost made $300 on a Topps Chrome Joe Maurer PSA 10 rookie pop less than 60. So again, Hall of Fame rookie. That's just knowing the market and knowing what people want, knowing what to grade and doing well on it. Um, some, some basketball stuff, but mainly a lot of Wyatt Langford, a lot of Victors. You can see a lot of CJ Stroud in here. The Stroud stuff is more volume, not necessarily high margin because these are, you know, high print run cards or not necessarily, you know, super rare parallels. Um, but again, the bread and butter here is going to be for a first quarter, for these first quarter cards that I've already sold. Again, we're looking at only a cohort of 157 cards that I've sold. You know, this is just a small number. It's roughly 20 cards, 21 cards of 157 that I made a profit of over $100 on. So in order to really flip successfully, there's a lot of cards in here that you're going to be making $30 to $100 on, $20 to $100 on. So let's just see what that is. So $20 profit or more. Let's see. Let's just go right here and drag that up. We're looking at roughly 73 cards. That's almost half. Almost half the cards I grade, I make $20 or more on. Uh, in terms of overall profit, roughly two-thirds of the cards I've sold, I made a profit on, meaning a positive margin. Uh, roughly a third of the cards I made, a, I took a loss on. The ones that are, have these little negative fives and sixes and sevens, I'm very proud of those. I'm very thankful because that means the gambling pay to get a 10, the cost to gamble was very low. The ones that were the, the biggest, pain, most painful losers, uh, really we've got a couple Wimbies at the bottom, which are kind of surprising. We got a Redback Variation SP that only went for $48 at auction. It was a PSA 9. I paid 106 raw for that card. I think raws still go over that. It's just, I don't know. Whenever I auction cards, I, you know, sometimes you just get, you get pounded. <laughs> just get pounded. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then just a bunch of PSA 9s. So obviously the cards I lose on, they're probably going to be PSA 9s. There's some PSA 10s in there. It looks like there's 
a handful of PSA 10s that I actually lost money on. Looks like a lot of Yamamoto, so that's just like playing the hot potato game, guys. You know, if you're if you're late to the hot potato game, you get burned, unfortunately. Um, and even that one, a Stroud Silver, I paid $83 for that. Probably one of the first ones I bought and ended up losing money on it. So, hot potato, baby. Got to pass that sucker on to somebody else real quick because prices come down on a lot of stuff. Um, so, roughly two-thirds of the things I'm making money on. All right. So, we're going to pivot over just two more topics. We are going to talk about why I'm why I think this is my best year. Uh, and then secondly, why I don't think it's going to hold up. So... The reason why I think this is my best year thus far, this $28,000 annualized is over 100 grand. That's a great year. It's about my best year since, you know, really 2020. Um, the reasons why, three big reasons, big time players, Wyatt Linkford, Victor Wimbanyama, CJ Stroud, all rookies, all, you know, prospects that people are very excited about. Um, great timing for Wyatt Linkford. Who knows what's going to happen, you know, later on in terms of the rest of the year. He is going to have rookie logos, likely a limited supply of rookie logos because Topps is not going to be able to whore him out for an entire year. He made his major league debut, meaning roughly half the year he's going to he's going to be in half the releases. Hopefully they delay adding him to products. I don't want him thrown into a bunch of early stuff, but um, that's good news for Wyatt Linkford, uh, future collectors and investors and likely flippers, assuming, assuming he does well. Victor Wimbanyama. Uh, generational talent. What else do I have to say? Like, I think it's pretty obvious, like, how great of a player he is, how excited people are. The buzz is insane. He's basically having the buzz of Zion Williamson minus the eating disorder and also Instagram model, you know, issues. John Morant was also a very exciting prospect. Victor is the most exciting prospect since those 2019 guys. Everybody in between has just sucked. Unrelatable, so funny. Victor Wimbiyama speaks better English than 95% of the league, and he and his first language is French. That's exciting. The guy is great in front of camera. He's just, I'm, I'm a big fan, huge fan, love it, and I can I see why people are excited about him. And then C.J. Stroud, obviously the, one of the best rookie years we've ever seen from a quarterback. No, he's not Patrick Mahomes. Nobody's going to be Patrick Mahomes, but I think he's probably the best quarterback we've seen probably since Patrick Mahomes. You know, I've. I'll leave it at that. It's just a lot of exciting prospects that people are, are very, very excited about. And a lot of people are playing hot potato with them. So they're excited about them. They want their cards. They want to pass them off to other people. All very, very exciting. This is so much better than prospecting LaMelo Ball and Anthony Edwards and you know all the other basketball guys and a lot of the Bowman Chrome headliner guys in the previous years who have all flopped. Um, and then even some of the quarterbacks. We've had some you know, super hyped quarterback classes, and people have lost so much money on quarterback prospects. Basically, if you're not buying Patrick Mahomes, you've not done really well, unless you're flipping hot potato style. But you know, it seems like there's some people who actually want to hang on to a lot of these guys' cards, whether it's Wyatt, whether it's Stroud, whether it's Victor. So that's all great. Um, next, big-time sets. During Q1, really Q4 and Q1, big-time sets came out. Bowman Chrome Draft, Panini Prison Basketball, Panini Prison Football, you know, and all those things were competing for dollars that were getting allocated to Christmas and to Bowman's Best and to other, you know, Tops Update. There's just a flood of great products all at one time, driving prices down. So if you're buying stuff at auction, you're getting deals. You know, there's only so much hobby dollars that could be allocated and spent around. So whenever all these releases get released at the same time, great time to buy. So I think that's fantastic. Um, and then uh, also the third thing is going to be uh, great quality. So all these products really had great quality. Um, you know, compared to previous years, Prism, Bowman Chrome, all these products, really surface scratches, bad centering, things that you can't really anticipate whenever you're buying to grade. A lot of these cards, basically if they're centered, you, you got a pretty good shot at getting a good grade on them. Um, and that's exciting. Why I don't think this is going to hold up? Well, I don't think it's going to hold up because we just had our first quarter for all these guys to have really their big, hot cards. Prism is obviously the, the premier low-end type of card, uh, as well as Bowman Chrome. It, it, Bowman Chrome was the premier card for a lot of these you know, baseball prospects. So to expect that to happen, Q2, Q3, Q4, is there going to be a Wyatt Linkford in, Q, in the new Bowman that's coming out? No, there's not. There's not. I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you there won't be. There definitely won't be in the, the the fall release of Bowman Chrome, which is mainly international prospects, which for the most part, it's been a flop for almost the past four, five, six years. That product 
absolutely sucks. Watered down. A bunch of names of people who are going to play in Summer League, and they all start off with amazing hype, and then they crater immediately after. So Bowman Chrome draft amazing product. I just don't see the same talent coming out in future releases. And for the players who have already popped, their brain is going to get few, it's going to get diminished over time as more rookie logos come out onto the market. So um, over time, there's going to be less buzz because everybody's got cars. Optic coming out, Select is coming out, big releases like Flawless and you know Immaculate, National Treasures, all these big things. Yeah, they're not going to be really all that gradable because those sets are not gradable. But you know, all those commodity cards like Optic and Select is just going to drive prices down for the stuff that's already out there, and you can't likely get the same margins as you can with the initial you know boost whenever cards come out of the first player. So um, for that reason, I don't see this twenty-eight thousand dollars extrapolating out to a hundred thousand dollar margin. I wish that I did, but unfortunately not. But that's my year thus far. Let me know what you all think down below. Uh, is this something that you are also seeing? If anybody else is also buying, selling, flipping, uh, let me know if this is a trend that you're seeing. All right, we'll see you.